Hey everybody, Armand here for Baseman Sports, Baseball Edition. This video is going to focus on field construction. I know everyone has a different size and shape of room, basement, whatever space you're using, your garage. And here in our lab in Jersey City, we have a nicely padded floor as you'll see. And I have some other accessories that come in a typical basement baseball starter kit. Let's take a look at what we have and what we can do. There'll be your Nerf bat, your Nerf balls. We like to use soft balls to avoid damage in the house. I think parents will appreciate that. And we also have these magnets that have different labels for home runs, singles, doubles, foul balls, outs, double plays. And those could be put around different places of your home field. This is something that you'll make your own. And then we have just some simple field tape, which you could use to mark um, usually the pitcher's mound and if you need to, areas of the strike zone in the batter's box. So, and, and obviously the pads. So we'll provide enough pads, which would essentially form uh, bases and, uh, and could also be used for the actual floors if you don't have a very soft carpet or surface to play on. But ordering enough pads for all, the, all of your flooring would be more of an accessory, uh, additional purchase. In the actual starter kit, we just provide the five basic pads for the four bases as well as um, you know, one, one additional extra pad. So that being said, I've got uh, some construction we're finishing here. We're actually just going to finish up some of the floor padding because we don't want to be playing on that hard surface, although we could. It would just be a different type of freedom you have when you have soft flooring. And you see these nice little interlocking mats, which are typically used in a lot of yoga studios and karate dojos. Um, there's different types of thickness. We offer the um, 3 8 inch thickness. It just gets more expensive the thicker you make it, but of course, it's also a lot softer. The, uh, the half inch is the thickest they have. And now we have a different color here, and you'll see we also have a cut, which I can show you the blade we use, which is just a very fine, sharp blade. We don't include it in our package, but um, you would do that if you were buying floor padding and you needed to customize around poles and things of that nature in your basement. In this case, we've done that. And the reason why we're using a second color here is because this is part of second base and it's near the pitcher's mound so it would it would serve a function of tagging a runner out by stepping on the base which we'll demonstrate in another video where we focus on field play so the cuts aren't always going to be perfect but these are good enough to form second base so we've got the blue pads there and uh, over here we're going to create first base and for first base you need both um, a floor pad for the runner to be able to step on first base to reach it and then we also need a target so there's really two main bases for which we need a target there's first base and home plate I mean optionally you could also have targets for second and third meaning throwing targets for the fielder so as the pitcher slash fielder this is really mostly a one-on-one -on -one game you could also have a two-on-two -two concept but one-on-one -on -one is essentially what this was designed for. It's not enough space in most basements for more than that. So uh, here, as we could see, uh, we've constructed a nice version of first base. We've got our normal field green padding, or if you have a carpet, that's fine. We need something on the ground here for the runner, obviously, to um, touch with their foot as they run to first base. And we need a target for the fielder to throw and hit. So as, a, as the pitcher slash fielder, you, when you throw the ball, uh, if you hit any of these pads or the floor pad or the base runner, because we're playing with a soft ball, that all counts as an out in our system. Now we've got this, if you have some extra padding, in this case, we've got this extra small piece here. Um, and if you decide to, you can add it as an extra target. And depending on how big a space you have and what kind of advantage you need to give to either the fielder or the batter, um, you can take these things away and make them a little harder. But uh, we find in our setup, because we have a big space, uh, we'd like to give a little extra advantage to the fielder by having several targets to throw at. So 
That's our construction of first base. We did second base here, which is going to be near the pitcher's mound. And next we're going to focus on home plate. Now for home plate, again, everyone has a different setup. Here we're using this corner, which bodes well for the diamond shape of, of an infield of baseball. And like any home, there's going to be different furnishings and things. Here we have a speaker and um, it doesn't come in the starting package, but we're going to use one of our little bean bags here so that we could use this other piece of padding that comes in the starter kit. You'll have at least five of these and you could always order additional accessories and um, actually prop it up a little bit here with some other pads. And obviously all this depends on whether you're playing with, as we say, big kids or little kids, the big kids being us grown-ups that are a little taller or little kids, which would usually start at, you know, around seven, eight years old, up to 10, 12, 14, depending on the sizes and the heights, you might adjust this. So in this case, you see we actually have a, a th about a third of a pad that we've cut here, and then we've interlocked it in with a full square pad to actually raise the strike zone, which is just gonna be this upper pad. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape to tie it across here. I'll do that shortly, and we can see how the strike zone will be maintained in this case. But we found that this works well for us to just kind of prop it up a little bit and then use tape. We'll provide a few pieces of tape, but you could use any tape, color tape obviously being more useful, something preferably a different color than, than the color of the pad, right? So here we go, we're going to just put a piece of yellow tape across the bottom and that'll denote the bottom of the strike zone. So what we say is if it hits the yellow line or anything in the blue pad above, it's a strike. Anything below or obviously missing the pad altogether is a ball. So here you have our strike zone and now what we'll do is take a number of steps from here. Again, it's all relative depending on the age of the players. Um, it is a soft Nerf ball and takes a bit of effort to throw. But let's just take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we'll do 10 steps here for the back of the backstop for the pitcher's mound, which is right near second base. And we'll just do a line across the floor. And you'd have to keep your back foot on that line as a pitcher. Now, sometimes if we're playing with a handicap with, let's say, a kid, you're playing with your kid and you're the grown-up, the grown-up could pitch from back here. And we can take two steps forward, one, two, and we can do a shorter backstop and just have a little zone within which different age players or whatever the Whatever's determined as the advantage one has over the other can pitch from the other line. Okay, and so that should be adjusted towards home plate. And here we go, we got our field coming together. So in your basement sports baseball starter kit, uh, you'll have these magnets, as we said, and there'll be a number of them, at least 15 of them with different labels and also color codes. So you know, yellow for foul, green for home run, red for an out or a double play, and then different shades of blue for single, double, and triple. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and place some around. So here in our setup, we use this, this would be the third base line coming from home plate. And we're gonna go ahead and post up, and we provide this Velcro tape on the back. Every parent wants to protect their furniture and make sure whatever games kids are playing are done in a way that's um, safe and doesn't create too much markings. So um, 
Now, there's different things you can do to make it a little more or less permanent, but this is pretty um, mild adhesive here. So we're going to go ahead and just call this the foul pole and just put it in like that. And it's on a double-sided piece of Velcro, so I could actually pull this, pull this off and put on a different label if I want to there, but that's going to be a foul pole down the third baseline. And then we're going to work with our home run sticker. Now, again, this is a pretty vast space. It's a pretty good amount of space. So what we do is for ground balls that hit the back wall, those would be singles. If it hits the wall on the fly, it's a double. And then we would mark triple and home run. In this case, um, let's see how high I can get here without getting on a ladder or a chair. And we're going to mark our, gonna mark our home run. Think right up about here. Okay, so anything that, it's not like you have to hit the target, but it's got to go at that level, which also has a line here or above for a home run. Previously, we used this yellow mark for a triple, so that might be okay, or I might actually think about moving that down because we've had some tournaments and games here already, which have been quite, uh, quite exciting if you haven't seen the highlights. So another thing that we don't include in the starter kit, but that is an accessory, and that also actually goes in the starter kits for some of our other sports, like soccer and hockey, um, lacrosse, would be these nets. So um, for baseball, how we're using the nets, and we have two of them here, and uh, we use them as fielders, right? So I can put one here if I have a left-handed batter that I think might drag. And then I can put one here on the other side. Usually if I have a right-handed batter, I might put both on this side. And since it's a one-on-one -on -one game, the rule would be that uh, when the batter hits the ball into the net, that counts as an out, so you don't even have to throw them out. So this is what we have here. Um, I have a little stand here where we keep our balls and this is just again something that um, you could use anything a table or any piece of furniture and it's good to have a few balls which we do include in the starter kit and you could always order more uh, we know balls get lost pretty easily or they could be used obviously for multiple sports and games but in this case we've got our pitcher's mound we've got our bases we've got our field markers and we've got our infield uh, support in terms of the nets and we're ready to play ball.